Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, we're going to start our uh, survey, verse by verse survey, through the book of Corinthians. Now, Paul founded uh, the church at Corinth, and if you want to review through it, it's in uh, Acts chapter uh, 18. Uh, tells the story of him finding it. Again, uh, the Corinthians were, uh, it was a pagan city, uh, had no knowledge of God. They were abusing uh, a lot of the gifts. They were rich in gifts of God, uh, but they were still immature Christians and were abusing them. And uh, in the first uh book to the Corinthians, Paul really is going to let them have it a little bit, uh, but let's just get started. Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and Sosthenes, our brother. Uh, Paul makes mention that he was called to be a, an apostle. If Paul didn't believe that he was an apostle or he didn't believe he was called to be an apostle, I don't think he could have endured uh, all that he had to endure. Uh, Paul probably went through a more persecution than just about anybody. But this Sothenes, uh, he went through pers persecution too. I'm going to go to uh, uh, the book of Acts chapter 18 and verse uh, 17. Then all the Greeks took Sothenes, that's this guy uh, he's mentioned in 1 Corinthians, the chief ruler of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat. And Gallio uh, cared for none of those things. But if you want to look, uh, read about the founding of the church, uh, it's in chapter 18 of Acts. I'm not going to take the time to read everything. But this Sothenes was a Jew uh, that got saved, and he was immediately beaten for his uh, for his faith. Unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, that word sanctified means set apart for a holy purpose, called to be saints with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ that in everything ye are enriched by him, in all utterance and in all knowledge. Even at, he's, this is his salutation, this is his greeting to this church. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that ye come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we are still waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ today, and we should be waiting and watching for that. Who shall also confirm you unto the end, that ye may be blameless in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. To be blameless in the judgment, at the judgment seat of Christ, you see, you can be saved, and uh, you can uh, be on your way to heaven, no doubt about that, but you can uh, lose things. You can uh, be blamed at the judgment seat of Christ. If you didn't uh, use his gifts, the talents that he gave you, uh, you will be uh, called out at the judgment seat of Christ is my understanding. God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now I beseech you, I beg you, 
brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Would to God that Christians today would be of the same mind and of the same judgment, and there were no divisions. In this day and age, in the uh, day of apostasy that we live in, uh, Christians are divided. And uh, to be divided like the way we are, uh, we're easily conquered. Divide and conquer, that's the oldest military trick there is. And uh, I don't see it getting any better uh, at all. But he's talking, of course, to the Corinthians. Uh, For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, this is a church in this house, that there are contentions among you. Uh, Now this I say that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, I am of of Paulus, I am of Cephas, and I of and I of Christ. Uh, They were, you know, I follow this guy, I follow that guy. That goes on today still. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you, or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius. Unless any should say that I had baptized in mine own name. I baptized also the household of Stephanus, and uh, besides, I know not whether I baptized uh, any other. Now listen to this. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Uh, Paul was not sent to baptize, but to preach the gospel. This, to me, says that baptism is not a part of salvation, or or he would be baptizing everyone. He was out preaching the gospel, getting them saved, uh, and leaving the believer's baptism to others. Baptism is a a symbol, a sign, if you will, uh, that you have received Christ. It has nothing to do with your salvation whatsoever. It's the blood of Jesus Christ through his blood uh, we are saved. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God that will preach, folks. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, the scientists, the people that believe in evolution, uh, uh, they just make fun of this book anymore, don't they? They just, uh, uh, you're an idiot if you believe in Jesus Christ. But unto us uh, who are saved, it's the power of God. The preaching of the, God, uh, the cross is the most important uh, thing you can preach on if you are a preacher, in my humble opinion. Uh, Preach Christ and Christ crucified, and he rose again the third day. Hallelujah to the Lamb. For it is written, I will uh, destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. (laughs) Uh, They think they're wise, uh, these, especially these college-educated fellas, don't they? They just... Well, uh, this and that, and the science, and this and that. And so, well, Paul said that science is falsely so called in some senses. There is a true science, but it always goes by the book. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Have not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? I believe that nothing exploded and created the universe. That, my friend, is the foolishness of this world. Nothing exploded. In the beginning, uh, to begin with, if something explodes, have you ever known an explosion to create anything but chaos? Anyway, I'm not getting into that right now. For after 
that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Uh, for the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. The Jews require a sign. Uh, the signs and wonders were given to the Jews, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. If you're in the church, if you're in the body of Christ, there is no longer Jew or Gentile. We are one body, one baptism, one Lord, one spirit. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble or called. Uh, a lot of preachers, a lot of the best preachers there ever were, you know, they weren't mighty men and they weren't considered wise, but they had the power of God because they believed this book. Believing this book and having being filled with the Holy Spirit of God will do you a lot more uh, than a 10-year doctorate at a theological college, in my humble opinion. I would rather hear an old hillbilly uh, from Carolina preach the Word of God with power and with his spirit uh, than listen to uh, some theological uh, guy at a seminary that uh, doesn't even believe the book. Uh, they have to, they think that, uh, you know, they have to go back to the Greek and the Hebrew and they don't even uh, know what, half of what they're talking about. But they make themselves to be wise so that you have to think, well, he's the last word. We can't understand the word of God unless we uh, go through him and learn the Greek and Hebrew. And that's a crock, folks. That's a lie of Satan. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea. And things which are not to bring to naught the things that are. He's going to take the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. It'll come from the mouth of babes, folks, that no flesh uh, should glory in his presence. Uh, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto you, unto us, wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. We have been redeemed, we're righteous, and we are set apart for a holy purpose uh, by God at salvation. That according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Don't get puffed up in your pride if you think you know something. And that is the end of chapter 1 of the book of Corinthians. Again, I'm just doing a read-through and a little bit of a survey, but uh, I hope you'll stay, stick with the uh, stick with the Bible study. If you're not doing it yet, uh, Joey at KJV Reviews is, uh, he has a live a Bible study, Monday night, 7 o'clock Central. I misspoke last time, I'm sorry. And uh, he is uh, studying, we're studying the book of Nahum, uh, which is, goes right along with Jonah. And uh, he's real good, and you can ask questions, and I would encourage everyone uh, to join us. We should have 100 people in that uh, Bible study, in my opinion. But... Uh, all right, folks, uh, God bless you. Read these Bibles, and uh, 
Remember to pray without ceasing. And uh, I will see you next time with chapter 2 of Corinthians. God bless each and every one of you. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen.